Hello and thanks for joining me. I'm going to be sharing with you some thoughts on fragrances that I've recently purchased. But first, I wanted to share thoughts on some decants that I received from a buddy of mine here on YouTube, Joss at Joss's Fragrance Mixology. She shared a bunch of decants. She's so generous, so lovely. And I fell in love with, I think, let's see here, about five of them. And I won't describe them in detail except for one. I wanted to share that I really like Bon Bon Banan, Banana, Banana, Banana. Reminds me of the Minions in Despicable Me. Banana, Bon Bon Banan, Banana. It's sold at Urban Outfitters lovely banana fragrance that gives me some coconut vibes too i think it's going to be lovely for summer and those are super affordable fragrances and then oma biche from lolita lempica Proct, which is a gorgeous like green grassy fragrance which i love for spring i love citrusy clean fragrances i love florals but um if it smells like grass i'm in and I want chew, and I know I'm late to the game on the Jimmy Chew. I want chew, but what a pretty fragrance. One that I really fell in love with from the decants that she sent, and she was generous enough to send me a big one. It's Elegantly Tokyo from the Zara, I think it's called Vibrant Cities Collection. Ooh, so pretty, so light, so fresh. It's like a combination between like a fresh floral blossom and a little bit of like fresh laundry smell plus like a rice note i don't know if any of that is in there but that's what i get out of there and i love it i think it's so pretty so i'm gonna enjoy playing with this this spring and maybe getting a full bottle so i have been super curious about a fragrance that has gotten tremendous hype here on youtube I am susceptible to the hype just like you are and i know that sometimes i contribute to hype as a reviewer, this is Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper from Kaali. A lot of people that I trust here on YouTube have raved about what a gorgeous fragrance this is, how it's wonderful for date night. So I was curious. Now I ordered, of course, the little mini, as you see in the recent Sephora sale. And I really like this a lot. When I sprayed it on. I thought, ooh, this is, this is lovely. Yes, it's peppery, it's rosy, rosy, rose-based. Lots of powder, lots of musk is what I get out of this. And I adored it and started to add to cart on Sephora and thought, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold your horses. This smells like something that you have. And I'm trying to be better about not buying too many fragrances that smell the same. I mean, hello, you're bound to do that regardless if you have a large collection. But I wore it, I sat with it. I'm really bad about that sort of thing. Like I know it smells like something, but I can't figure out what it is. So I waited and I waited and I waited. I took a car ride. By the way, this thing is like atomic in nature. It's like, boom, it fills up a room. I sprayed on this arm and that arm, light sprays. Like ch -ch -ch. It was everywhere. It was all over my car. It was all over every room that I went in. The thing is nuclear as can be. And then it dawned on me. Oh my gosh, it smells a lot like Oud Satin Mood from Maison Francis Kirkjean. Maybe heavier on the pepper and the rose a little bit, but so similar that I don't know that you need both. If you have one, do you need the other? Now, if you have both and you feel differently, please weigh in in the comments. Listen, fragrance is subjective. As we know, people smell things very differently and have different experiences. So, Please share your thoughts and so others that are watching the video can read and make a decision for themselves about whether they think it's similar enough or not. I have smelled the original Oud Satin Mood. I have a sample of it. And I also had a dupe from Dua that I ended up selling. I wasn't crazy about that version, but I do have another inspired by version, which is Oud Satin from Ministry of Oud. This is very, very close to Oud Satin Mood. You know. No one can tell the difference in the air kind of a thing. And these two fragrances I find to be similar enough that I, I don't know that I need the Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper right now. I may get it at another point in time because I agree that it is a gorgeous fragrance, but this will satisfy the same itch that this one does. Maybe I need to add something a little bit rosier onto this one, but 
same family. So I'm going to pass on this, although I do give it a huge thumbs up. Beautiful fragrance. Finally got my hands on the elusive and hard to find Victor and Rolf Dancing Roses from the Magic Line. I'm such a dodo bird. I ordered a whole sample set of this Magic Line and fell in love with several of them. I think there's one that's called Salty Something that I really liked and another one, like three all together, especially this Dancing Roses. And it really surprised me because at the time that I was trying out that sample set, I wasn't really that into rose fragrances. Like if it said rose, I was like, oh, I don't know. And this one shocked and surprised me. But, and the bottle was available at the time and I didn't get it. And so I missed out for a long time, but it recently became available through a friend on Instagram that was selling off a lot of her collection. If you're watching, thank you so much. And I purchased it from her and I have zero regrets. This is such a pretty, light, effervescent, almost like, can something be effervescent and like a liquor, boozy kind of fragrance at the same time? Because I say yes. Like if you combine like a champagne quality with a heavy liquor, Infragrantica it says that there's a brandy note in here. So something in that range, like a brown liquor kind of smell that gives you a sense of what I'm talking about. Plus a very light, fresh rose and a little bit of cherry. There's a sour cherry note in here. I don't get huge, huge, huge cherry like you would in, say, Lost Cherry from Tom Ford or something like that. It's a very light, simple cherry. Like if you drop a cherry in your drink and you can smell then the, the essence of the cherry in the liquid, okay? Help me out here with that. But that's what you get out of here. I really enjoy this. A very pretty fragrance. Happy to finally have this in my collection. I picked up Mirsal with Love. I hope that's how you say that by Afnan. Quite frankly, I just liked the bottle. I thought it looked cool and I wanted to try it out. And it's a win. However, this is a very adventurous fragrance. If you go to Fragrantica, it will tell you that people think this smells like BR540. I don't get that. I'm not quite sure. Maybe there are hints of that, like a very masculine version of BR540. Not to say it can't be worn by people that like feminine fragrances, but I don't get that like sweet, airy BR540 thing. I think this is a very heavy fragrance. It is a, a musky oud with some florals in it is how I describe it. It smells like something else in my collection, like I was saying before with the sweet diamond pink pepper and I can't figure out what the heck it is. It's also been compared to opulence uh, musk from Latafa. So maybe that instant crush. Yes, I do get a little bit of instant crush from this, but this is its own fragrance. I don't think it smells identical to either one of those or that they're comparable. Like if you have one that you can't have the other, it's strong, strong. Okay. Spray, spray, done. Maybe a third spray here if, you know, you're feeling bold, but that's it. Don't get crazy with this. Even in winter months, it is a very strong, powerful fragrance. And I think this bottle is just so, so adorable. It reminds me of like an inkwell. So this is a happy blind buy. Oh my God, so I just figured out what this reminds me of. Very quickly, these shelves here are organized by category. It's the vintage stuff way, way, way at the top that you can't see in this picture. It's like up here somewhere. I have all of my vintage fragrances. And then I have like my summertime, my leather, oody kinds of fragrances here, the smoky ones, right? I have the powerhouse date night fragrances in here, so on and so forth. We can do that some other time. But I went to this shelf that I have my leather and oody fragrances on to find a place for this one. And it dawned on me that it smells very close to this one, which is Samao Al Rasazi Mali from Rasazi. These could be maybe siblings, okay? Yeah, so if you have this one, it would remind you a lot of this one. Next is a fragrance that I got interested in after hearing Paula Bianca talk about this multiple times. I've been thinking about it for over a year and finally pulled the trigger a few weeks ago. 
it is Cartier La Panther. Okay, so this is the Eau de Parfum concentration. There's so many versions of this that I got confused as to what I was purchasing, but I, I think I got it straight now. I really love the bottle and it's hard to show on camera, but inside of the glass casing, there is a panther face that is part of the design. Really, really creative bottle. And I do love these tops that depress like that as the atomizer. It's an elegant bottle. The fragrance itself is elegant as well. It's complicated. It's complicated. Maybe just complex, maybe not complicated. <laughs> A complex fragrance. A complex fragrance. I smell some fruitiness, intense fruitiness, patchouli and florals, like a deep rose, maybe something a little bit green in there as well. Yes, this is a sophisticated fragrance, as people have said. Yes, this could be a special occasion fragrance, and maybe that's influenced by the fact that it's a Cartier fragrance, but what a gorgeous bottle, and I think a very elegant scent. This too reminds me of something. It reminds me of Etienne Agne Debut by Night. That's similar, but that one is like a woody, patchouli, rosy fragrance. This gives me the patchouli rosy piece with more fruitiness at the top and some greenness. Really pretty, really interesting, really complex. This next fragrance I am blaming on Lulu at Lulu's World. This is... <laughs> Eli or Eli Saab Cure Alang. I have been listening to her rave about this for a while and finally purchased it. And I'm not sure if I hate it or love it. I think I'm leaning on the love side. There's something really peculiar and interesting and different about it. So to me, there's a spectrum, right, of like super boring to incredibly complicated over here or complex or whatever, however you want to describe it, unusual, peculiar, weird. And this is over on this side and I'm not sure if it's so far there that it's like over the edge, but I keep sniffing it and I keep spraying it on. So therefore I conclude that I must be secretly loving this. It is to me a heavily animalic fragrance. It's like this raw, earthy leather <laughs> with this little bit of smokiness in it. And I keep searching for that lang lang in there. And yeah, there's like this deep, subtle butteriness in the background of this fragrance that kind of caresses the leather with this like smoky, maybe even an incense -y thing going on. So it is really strange. And I think I'm concluding that I am in the love category. You know how people say love and hate is the two ends of the same circle. So I think I'm on the love side of that circle, not <laughs> on the hate. I don't hate it. I don't know why I even started off saying that I might hate it because I don't, but it is really a strange to me, peculiar fragrance. And that's coming from someone who really likes weird fragrances. So I'm going to keep wearing this. When I wear it, I do like it a lot. It comes on super strong and then you need to let it dry down a bit. And then you're sniffing yourself, trying to like understand the mystery of the fragrance. So thanks Lulu for this recommendation. I also recently got my hands on Giorgio Armani's Sun de Joya, which I think has been hard to find for people. I'm not sure, but I got it on Fragrance Buy, snatched it up. Yes, yes, and more yes. This is going to end up in a Tropical Florals video this summer. I did one last summer, and I would like to repeat that. Tropical Florals is one of my favorite fragrance categories. Ah, <sighs> frangipani, alang alang. It doesn't list coconut as a note, but it does give me that like elegant sun block vibe, suntan lotion vibe. It gives me like terracotta feels. Like if terracotta had, um, that's the older, more mature sister. This is the younger sister that's a little bit more carefree. Very, very similar in vibe. 
I think this is so pretty and I'm gonna enjoy this in the summer. One that I would absolutely wear all year round, but definitely for summer. Like I said, it doesn't have coconut listed as a note, but it gives me that kind of tropical feel. And maybe it's also like highly suggestive because the name is Sun de Joya. Either way, that's what I'm getting from this and I'm delighted to have it. Picked up a random little fragrance that I had never heard of and something about the name and the bottle and the color intrigued me. It was very inexpensive. I think it was under 20 bucks. Ghost, look at this thing. So I'm not even gonna bother reading you the notes because to me, this doesn't really smell like the notes. This is very, it's, the name is apt, ghost. It's airy, it's light, it's it's like fresh laundry. Like when you walk by where laundry is being dried and you get that dryer sheet smell, it's dryer sheets plus a little bit of floral plus something slightly fruity. But mainly it's very, very airy, like it's cloud-like, like it's almost not even there, but it is. Yeah, like an apparition. <laughs> Again, highly suggestive with the name, y'all. I mean, what can I say? I'm susceptible to those things. This is so cool and it's powerful. You put this on and it's like, whoa. Yet at the same time, it's like not there. It's very light and bright. Ghost. I picked up my Burberry Black Elixir, which only comes, if I'm not mistaken, in this 130 mil size. This is also a Francis Kirkjean creation. I don't know what I think about this. I was expecting to fall in love, of course. We blind buy things thinking we will love them. And I need to maybe give this a full day wear. I've worn on skin, I have tested on fabric. I've got it on my fragrance blotter strip thing here. It's jasmine and lemon at the top and rose and almond in the middle with a sandalwood base. It's also, I, it's like the, the hall of peculiar fragrances, a very, very odd peculiar fragrance. I don't know what I think about this. I get all of that. I get rose, I get lemon, I get almond, I get a very flat jasmine. I don't know, we will see. So I'm gonna put this in the maybe category. I don't dislike it, it's just not what I was expecting. I was expecting something deeper, darker, richer. And this has like a deep, dark rose in it, but um, it doesn't have the depth that I would have expected from this. Okay, so we'll keep playing with this and see what we think. Another one that I have heard a number of reviewers really enjoying is Mancera's Femenity. No, not femininity. It's called Femenity. I don't know why it's called that, but it is. I swear. It is right here on the bottle. Femenity. Apparently, femininity is synonymous with femininity. It's powdery and musky. And it's a hit in this house, by the way. This is one that my husband loved on me instantly and it wears well on me. It's got a peculiar set of notes. Again, peculiar. So let me read you some of these notes. Leather, tangerine, coffee, pink pepper at the top. In the middle, there's a violet and heliotrope, which I think is what this fragrance is characterized by. Like a little soft hint of leather, not a lot. Like if you're not a leather lover, I would not advise you to shy away from this. It is violet and it is heliotrope. And I do get a little hint of citrus. And in the base, vanilla, caramel, musk, sandalwood, amber. It is an interesting fragrance. I really like it, but I can't describe why. Powdery, violet-ish, <laughs> violet-esque. There are white florals in here too. Another complex fragrance that is one that you spray on and want to continue to sniff yourself. It's a thumbs up for me, to be clear, but I just find it strange and peculiar. A little bit soapy even, soapy and floral and leathery and violet-ish and you get that heliotrope. It's all of that all at, once, all at once with a little bit of a peppery feel. I mean, it just goes on and on. You can describe it 20 different ways. Femenity. My last three fragrances are from Danielle Hosier. I ordered these from... <gasps> Why does it look like I have spit all over this thing? I ordered these from Filthy Fragrance. 
It's true. I ordered them from Filthy Fragrance and they were incredibly inexpensive on a huge, huge deal. The first one is called Tuberose. Now, this did not smell like what I was expecting. This smells green to me, like a green baby tuberose. I was expecting something much deeper, sultrier, thicker. It's a very light fragrance. It may even have something like one of those lily of the valley or freesia kind of notes in it that give it some lightness and greenness in the floral category. My husband really liked this on me. He thought it was a nice, fresh floral. Um, I found it a little green and a little bit immature. And, and what I mean by that is like a very young bud of a fragrance, bud, floral bud, that was just starting to sprout and had it like reached its mature, full fragrant smell. So this is a meh for me right now, but there were two wins from the Daniel Hosier line. The first win is, I think it's pronounced Jozun. I enjoy this. It has been likened to Flower Bomb and La Via Belle. I don't know that I get either one of those out of here, maybe like faint hints of those. This is floral. It's got rose and it's got iris, a little jasmine, there's sandalwood, and there's also a praline vanilla and musk in the base that round this out nicely. It leans like, just the slightest touch gourmand. I, I don't know that I would categorize it that way, but there's something about the base notes that give me a gourmand feel, even though the top is a floral, like an irisy, rosy kind of combination with a little hint of a clean patchouli in there. This is a beauty of a fragrance. But the, the real big winner of the Daniel Hosier little mini haul that I would have paid the price of the three for the one alone for is Ambra Tabac. Listen, <laughs> if you like Ojan by Parfums de Marly, if you like Ambra d'Alexandra by Beaucheron, those kinds of fragrances that smell like a really hot apple pie with liquor, liquor just poured on top and tobacco all meshed together, if that kind of fragrance floats your boat, you need a little ombre tabac in your life. Now, I got these, like I said, off of Filthy Fragrance website. I just ran across that randomly while searching for this line of fragrances. I don't know if they're still available, but at the time that I purchased these, I think they were in the 80 to $90 range, and they're typically well over 200. I would have paid the full price for this one. It is gorgeous. It is strong. It is that wet, earthy tobacco, with, like I said, with apple pie and booze all together into one fragrance. It smells wonderful on my husband and on me. I'm going to really love this come um, fall. I'll wear this some in the spring, maybe like in the evenings, but it is definitely a cold weather kind of fragrance. Absolutely beautiful and worth every penny of the full price. That is my little haul for now. I've got, of course, what? More on the way because I have problems <laughs> and I love purchasing. I love purchasing. What can I say? I like purchasing makeup. I like purchasing fragrance. I like shoes. I like purses. Don't you? Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate all of your support and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, my friends.